Hi, Girl Scouts. It's so nice to see all of you. I can see you coming in and your happy faces and saying hi to each other. It's so fun to see you all here. So um, I just wanted to welcome you. And um, so I'm Katie Hurstein, and I'm the program manager and events manager at Girl Scouts of Colorado. And in my job, I get to be so lucky to be the one that gets to introduce um, a bunch of accomplished women um, in to your world oh, yeah, so that you no can worries. begin to be inspired about your future. So, and we have the perfect partner that's working with us to bring you this series and their college invest. So college invest, their college, Colorado's college savings program. And it makes it easy for you to save your education after high school. So basically, like that's a fancy way of saying that they exist for just one reason, and that's to help you and your families put away money to save for your inspired future. So, and I started a college invest saving plan for both my girls when we moved here 10 years ago, and I now have a daughter who's going off to college next year. So I'm really happy that we put some money aside with college invest to help pay for her future. So that's pretty neat. So in College Invest, it, you can kind of think of it like a, a piggy bank savings, but it's even better because the money that your parents or your caregivers or grandparents, the money that they put into your College Invest savings plan, it grows tax-free. So, um, and it's used for your education expenses past high school. So um, with tax-free, your money goes even further. So it can be used um, to spend at any college across the country, or trade schools, or even apprenticeships that can give you real world experience. So we're gonna hear a quick message from College Invest CEO about what she hopes you're gonna get out of today's session. Hey guys, I know, I know, I really know. Hi, I'm Angela Byer, CEO of College Invest, and welcome to this episode of Inspiring Futures. Through Girl Scouts, you've learned that if you can dream it, you can do it. And here at College Invest, Colorado's Education Savings I Program, have... we help you get there. And you're never too young to begin I to imagine no... your inspired uh, future. Yeah. So how will you impact this world? Will you run your own business, invent a new technology, or maybe even discover a life-saving cure? But wherever your inspiration takes you, a College Invest Savings Plan can help make your dreams a reality. Now, prepare to be inspired. Oh, it's because, oh, there you go. So Girl Scouts, we are lucky to have here with us the CEO of College Invest, Angela Byer. And Angela, hopefully we can see you and you can give us a wave. So um, unfortunately, I can't see everybody. So I'm sure you're there because I saw you come in and we'll um, hopefully chat with you towards the end because Angela actually has some zoo experiencing her experience herself. So Girl Scouts, I think it's going to be pretty exciting to hear from her about her experience with working at a zoo and, um, you know, and all the experiences she had working with zoo keepers and all the animals. It's going to be really fun to hear that. So um, and next up, I'm going to go over just a few housekeeping items because we've got to make sure we clear those. So um, we're going to be recording our sessions, but um, when we record them and we put them up on YouTube for anybody who's missed this to see, we're going to put little squares over your faces so we won't see you. So we would love to see your faces now. So turn on your videos and you can chat with us. Um, but it won't be off recorded on YouTube in the future. So um, we would love to see your faces and uh, that's what inspires us. So keep smiling. All right, and next up we have our Girl Scout Law. Hello, so if you would like to unmute yourselves, yeah. you can talk along with me. Are you ready? On my honor. I will try, I will try to serve God in my mind to help people at all times and to live with the Girl Scout law.
I will do my best, my best to be honest and fair, and we will considerate and good and caring, be patient and strong, and what I can do is be and do, and others and security myself, be first as wisely, make the world a better place, and be safe and be a sister to everyone. Oh, thank you. Are you just reading with me? I love you all. That was really jumbled. There, sorry, I just had to unmute myself quickly. But I loved hearing all of your voices. It was really fun. So I know what you hear today to, to what we're all here today to see is to talk to the Denver Zoo, right? It's going to be so exciting. So we have three women here from the Denver Zoo, an animal ambassador, a zookeeper, and a facilitator for the new animal hospital. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to turn it over to the Denver Zoo, and we're going to hear all about um, what they do. And you can prepare to be inspired and ask questions and everything. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hi there, how is everyone today? Wave if you can see us and hear us. Awesome, we're so excited to be here with you today. My name is Stephanie and this is Kelsey. Um, and we are both zookeepers on our animal ambassador team. And we wanna share with you three different roles that you can see here at Denver Zoo. Denver Zoo is a conservation-based organization. We have over 3000 animals and 100, over 100 staff, hundreds of staff. Um, and all, all of us work together to inspire communities to save wildlife for future generations. That's our mission. And every single person, whether you're working in accounting or directly with the animals, you are here to work for that mission statement. So we are also an AZA accredited zoo, which stands for Association of Zoos and Aquariums. And it's the highest standards that zoos and aquariums can meet in North America. Um, so it is an accreditation process that Denver Zoo has to go through every five years in, in order to actually get that accreditation status. So we're very proud of that as well. Um, so we today are going to take um, a trip through three of those different roles that you can have as uh, at Denver Zoo. Um, and we're gonna talk about how Kelsey and I got our start in zookeeping. Um, we're both zookeepers on our animal ambassador team. Uh, zoos can be split up into different teams of animals that you can work with, and we get to be lucky enough to work with our animals that go out and do shows and programs and stuff like that. Um, our stories, though, are very different. So for me, I'm very excited to say and why I'm so excited today is I was a, a Girl Scout for 12 years. So Girl Scouts had a very uh, imp impactful part of my life um, and really inspired me to go forward and follow my dream. And that was to work with animals. I just didn't know that zookeeping was a thing. Um, it really wasn't until my senior year in high school that someone's like, you know, you could be a zookeeper. I was like, oh, oh, I guess I could. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't ever think of it. I don't know if I thought animals got to take care of themselves or whatever, but um, I decided to do that. I pursued a, a bachelor's of biology, um, a bachelor's of science in biology. And while in college, I met somebody from um, Walt Disney World of all places. So they started telling me about a college program that was just for anybody that was in college. You could go down and work different internships at Disney. Um, and someone worked at the Animal Kingdom. I had actually never been to Disney World um, at 18 years old. So I didn't even know what was there. So I got to find out that there are animals there. There's a full AZA accredited zoo in Disney's Animal Kingdom. So I went down for a college program and I actually just worked at attraction rides. Um, but while I was there, I got to network. And that meant getting to know other people in those areas. And the very first person that was giving me an orientation to Disney's Animal Kingdom was a zookeeper. So I pulled her aside after my orientation and said, how do I get your job? Um, she laughed because she thought she hears this all the time and didn't think that I was actually going to pursue this, um, but I meant it. And uh, I came back. Um, I actually 
flew in. So I did my, my internship, which was about eight months. And then I left, I went back to Ohio and had an interview for a keeper training position. And it would, had to be an in-person interview and I didn't want to tell them that I wasn't living there. So I flew in for the day, I interviewed, they found that out um, and got really excited that I was so dedicated that I would fly in for an interview um, and then managed to get this trainee position or an, it's basically like a paid internship. Um, I got that position and then worked for six months with the primate team, which was my passion. I wanted to work with primates so much. And then I worked with primates and I realized I didn't want to work with primates anymore. <laughs> um, it was not my cup of tea and that's totally okay. There's lots of different, different animals that you can work with out there. So I started trying out different teams. Um, so I managed to get a full-time position after that and worked at the Pocahontas and her forest friend show, which uh, specialized in small North American animals. So raccoons, opossums, skunks, rabbits, uh, lots of different things. Um, worked there for about two years and then worked a night shift. So then I, I completely flipped my schedule and I worked overnight. So I got to watch all the animals at night and help while construction crews were coming in and um, watch over the animals. I It seemed like not the best thing because it was overnight and I was sleeping during the day, but I got to do so many things in that job. Like holding a four day old baby Okapi for hours on end that was getting treatments. <laughs> um, I got to do a lot of things that I, I never would have experienced in a regular zookeeping day job. But the, the hours got tiring. So I switched um, and got another position on a day team and worked uh, on our East Savannah team. Uh, so I worked uh, with rhinos and lions and cheetahs and a lot of different hoofed animals, different hoof stock antelope. Um, and it was great, I loved it. And I realized though, that I really love the educational aspect of being a zookeeper. I like to have both talking to the people and taking care of the animals. So I started looking at other zoos across the country. And about eight years ago, I found Denver Zoo. Um, of course, Denver is beautiful. Um, but I found Denver Zoo's mission statement, which was um, similar, but a little different than this, but it was all about engaging with communities. It was about bringing knowledge of animals to people. And that was exactly what I was looking for. So I stepped away from Disney and came here to Denver um, and then have been working for the past almost eight years on the ambassador team. So very excited to be here. Um, Kelsey has a much more localized story. <laughs> Kelsey actually grew up here in Colorado in Lakeland. Lakewood. No, Lakewood, sorry. I still don't know my Colorado as well, <laughs> but in Lakewood. So she grew up coming to Denver Zoo all the time. Um, in fact, uh, she actually came and would watch the show that our team now then produced um, and fell in love with it and said, that's what I want to do. Um, so she went off and went to University of Wyoming. Um, she doesn't have a microphone, so I'm, <laughs> she's nodding for me. <laughs> So University of Wyoming, and then you volunteered at the Wild Animal Sanctuary. So she volunteered there for a while, and then she started getting internships here at Denver Zoo, right? So seals, Bear. bears, bears first, um, and then seals, oh, ambassadors right after that. So then, then she, she found out she liked us um, and stuck around. So she had an internship with us and then got um, moved up to a seasonal position. Uh, and then from the seasonal, she got a temporary position. Um, and then from temporary, she got our, a full-time position with our team. We were happy to snag her. Um, so um, we've talked, that's a lot of our story of how we got to be zookeepers. And now let's talk about being an animal ambassador zookeeper. Um, so like I said before, there are lots of different ways that we can split up a zoo into animal groupings. So here at Denver Zoo, it's mostly by types of animals. So birds, a lot of birds are together. Carnivores are together. Elephants are considered pachyderms. So elephants and rhinos are together. And then us, we do the animal ambassadors. So we have a big variety of animals, but all of our animals have a job. They go out, they do shows, they do programs. Um, they are interacted with on a more one-to-one -one basis than animals that are in exhibits that are just viewed. Um, so, 
we're going to actually bring out an animal. So we're going to share one of our animals who has been an animal ambassador for about 15 years, like almost her entire life. So um, she has been with us and this is a big part of what it is that we do. So Rio here is coming out. She is a Southern Tamandua and she is uh, one of our veterans, she has been doing her job for a very long time. So we consider our animals to have jobs. They are um, coming out, they're doing different types of programs. And so for her, this is just part of her everyday life. Um, with our some of our other animals, they are just, they get to go out onto an exhibit. Um, and then uh, they get to, to do a little bit of training and they come back inside. But uh, for zookeeping in general, some of the, the principles are the same. So our animals might do a little bit of different things, but the ideas are the same. One of the most important things for us to do is look at the natural history of the animals that we're working with. So Rio here is a Southern Tamandua. So she comes from South America and she is nocturnal. So we can actually know a, quite a few things about her already. So she comes from South America in the rainforest, which means that we have to provide her with a nice warm atmosphere that is very humid. <laughs> Two things that aren't necessarily great for Colorado. Um, so she actually has a room that has a special humidifier in it that keeps her uh, house nice and toasty and warm um, and then helps prevent her from getting any sorts of dry skin. And then we also know she's nocturnal. So we have to make sure that we're not waking her up too much during the day and that she is um, getting enough stimulation at night when she's ready too. We'll see if she's, she got distracted. <laughs> um, so we always look at the natural history of an animal and then start learning how we can take care of them best. She's also arboreal, which is a fancy term for meaning she spends a lot of time in the trees. So she spends most of her time in the trees. So where she lives in her home, we make sure she has lots of branches that she can climb around on. She even has a hammock that she can sleep in, um, which is her absolute favorite place. Um, so we make sure that it's set up as close to what she would have out in the wild as possible. So that's not the only thing, though, that is really important for a zookeeper. Oh. We have to make sure that she is taken care of physically, but also mentally. So a lot of the really? stuff that we do with her is to help take care of her health oh. mentally as well. So what we're doing right now uh, may not look like much, but this is actually oh training. God, you know? it's so very scary. it's training and enrichment. So enrichment is just a fancy term for toys. We give her lots of toys that she can play with. Now toys for a Tamandua are very different than for us. I know I have a Nintendo Switch at home. I don't think Rio is going to play with a Nintendo Switch very well. Um, her little uh, claws are gonna just rip right through it. And that's not what she's gonna find fun. We have to think of what Rio is gonna find fun. And Rio Ooh, loves to rip things so apart. Cute. So we give her lots of things that she can shred apart with those <laughs> great <laughs> big nails of hers. So um, we also do a lot of training with our animals. So this is probably one of the biggest parts of our day, um, especially as animal ambassadors, because we have to train our animals to go out and be comfortable around other people and in different situations. So we have to train them and we do all of our training here at Denver Zoo with positive reinforcement. So they get treats and rewards for doing what we ask. So Rio right now is getting mealworms. That's her favorite treat in the entire world. Um, so she knows that every time we ask her to do something, she does it right, she's gonna get a reward. So she's getting these mealworms for it. So it's a great way to communicate with her. So this is mentally stimulating for her, but it also helps her participate in her own healthcare. So Rio is a very special animal to us because she is a mom twice and now officially a grandmother too. But we were able to do this training with her to help us do medical treatments like an ultrasound. So when we were trying to get Rio pregnant, she went through something called the Species Survival Plan or an SSP that got her matched with a mate that would um, produce a, a really good offspring. So a nice baby. So we have a, a big plan for which 
tamandawas should go with which tamandawas, all for different species. And so she got a mate, his name was Keto, and um, we were trying to get her pregnant. So in that attempt, we wanted to make sure that she was nice and healthy during her pregnancy. So we trained her to let us do ultrasounds on her voluntarily. So anytime we can have an animal do an exam while they're awake and it's voluntary, it's the ideal situation because we don't have to put them under anesthesia. They're nice and happy because they're getting lots of treats. But as you can see, Kelsey here is rubbing her tummy. All she has to do is stand up uh, and she will get the wand of a ultrasound on her stomach and it will help us tell if she had any babies. Um, so her ultrasounds, I think we've got some uh, video or photos that we'll, we'll get you loaded up here in just a second. Um, so she went through quite a few ultrasounds to make sure everything was going well. Um, and then uh, she actually was lucky enough. We uh, have, she has given birth to two babies. So she, her first baby was, um, was her very, very first baby. So she actually didn't know what she was doing. So we kind of had to work with her and teach her how to do different things. Uh, here we go, her different ultrasounds. Um, so, uh, in that video there, you'll see Katie, one of our keepers who has worked with Keo for over 10 years. So her and Rio are best friends. Um, and she's done a lot of the training with Rio for her ultrasounds and got to see her give birth, um, to two babies. So her first baby, Cayenne, um, is now living in Washington, DC. And Rio learned a lot from that pregnancy. There she is, a little baby. Um, and uh, didn't know that the baby is supposed to stay with mom. Uh, she, they have the little pinches, uh, the nails that pinch onto her poofy fur back here um, that help her stay on. Well, Rio didn't know that that's what the baby was supposed to do and, and the baby fell to the ground. So the keepers actually had to pick her up um, and make sure that Rio knew what she was doing, uh, had to teach her how to um, feed her. So she was actually, the baby was being bottle fed and uh, nursed off of Rio. But second go around, she had a little baby boy and uh, uh, Salvador, sorry. <laughs> oh, there's big Cayenne. Um, Ky Once Cayenne <laughs> got the idea of riding around on mom's back, she never wanted to get off. Um, so her second baby, she um, had learned a lot from the first one uh, and it was a great success uh, after the fact. Uh, so a lot of times when we train different types of behaviors, uh, like the ultrasound, we can convert it into different things like x-rays. So Rio has done um, radiographs as well. Um, all these different things will actually help us take care of our animals better. And it's also very mentally stimulating. Um, but going into the medical side of things, I'm going to introduce you to Rachel, and she is going to tell you all about um, her role here and the role of our vet staff here at Denver Zoo. So I will shoot it on over to her. Rio's going back, but don't worry. It's not the last animal you'll see from us. All right. Talk to you later. All right. Thank you so much, Stephanie. And thank you so much to Rio, our very adorable Southern Tamandua friend, for joining us today. So thanks everybody for being here. Obviously a big part of having a zoo is making sure that all of our zoo animals are able to stay nice and healthy and happy and feeling good. So that takes a lot of people to work at a zoo hospital. Here at Denver Zoo, we have a brand new animal hospital. It's one of the best in the country. And we actually have one of about six hospitals in the country that's open for viewing. So as a zoo guest, you can just walk in and see what's going on that day. This morning, our vet team did a checkup for a gray crowned African crane named Basil to make sure he's staying healthy. But we also do exams for animals like Rio, our little Tamandua friend who was just here. Um, so the only patients in the zoo that don't actually get to come to our uh, hospital to get taken care of are our elephants, rhinos, giraffes, and hippos, because they're just a little too big and heavy to fit through the doors. That doesn't mean we don't take care of those species, but we do it at home, out in the park where they live, in those really big barns designed for really big animals. So when we do have patients that need something, if they need a checkup or if they're due to have a shock or if they're feeling sick or maybe they hurt themselves a little bit, 
it's up to our doctors and our certified Hi. veterinary technicians to help them out. So here at Denver Zoo, we have two types of people that work in our hospital. We have four doctors of veterinary medicine, our veterinarians, and then we have six certified technicians, that word that I was saying earlier. They're basically our nurses here at the zoo. Um, we don't call animal nurses nurses, they're called technicians. So we actually have a short video from a few of our vet staff here talking about their kind of paths into veterinary medicine, how they knew that this is what they wanted to do. Um, and you can take a look at that and get to know our vet team a little bit. We could hear you over Wiki. I'm Dr. Lara Kost, I'm an associate veterinarian here at Denver Zoo. Hi, my name is Jesse, and I am a certified veterinary technician here at Denver Zoo. You need everyone. I knew I wanted to be a veterinarian when I was really young. I was probably around uh, eight or so when I got my first pet, which was a cockatiel. The cockatiel got sick and I was reading uh, the cockatiel handbook and trying to, to nurse our cockatiel back to health. And we ended up going to, to see a veterinarian, but I uh, was just fascinated at that point by, by animals and, and their medicine. And then uh, when I was in 10th grade, I had a, a biology in the video that was talking about different careers. And uh, at that point, I was between being a marine biologist or a veterinarian. And then he mentioned a marine veterinarian. And I thought, wow, I keep combining my two loves. And uh, from that point, I was sold and, and I knew that that's what I wanted to do. So my grandpa was a vet and every day when I was in elementary school, I would call him and find out what he had worked on and I just loved it. And as I got older, I was really unsure of what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to work at a zoo. Um, so I went to Oregon State University and got a bachelor's degree in fisheries and wildlife sciences and then graduated with that and didn't know exactly what I was going to do with it. And I just happened to get a receptionist front desk job at a vet clinic. And then I was like, wow, this is really cool. Like, this is something I could apply to zoo animals or wildlife medicine and then started volunteering at the National Zoo in Washington, D.C. So I did that for three years while I was going through vet tech school and then was able to start working at a zoo. So I like to say veterinary medicine is a little bit like putting together a puzzle. So we take things that we learn from the blood and we take things that we learn from the x-rays or the CT and we kind of put that all together to, to form our diagnosis and our treatment plan. I like that I can add to, to the knowledge base uh, about, uh, about some of these animals, their, their husbandry, their biology, their medicine. Uh, so that's really exciting to sort of be on the cutting edge of, of things and, and learning something new every day. So one of my favorite things about being CBT is that every day is super different here at the zoo. Most stuff in veterinary medicine is designed for cats and dogs. So it's a lot of being really creative and figuring out how you can make a face mask that's designed for a dog's face work for a flamingo or a snake or something like that. I think if you want to go into a veterinary medicine career, you should start early, just try and get as much experience as you can, working with, especially if you want to get into zoo medicine, get experience with things outside of cats and dogs. So if there's a exotic clinic you can volunteer at, or um, as a lot of zoos have volunteer programs, that's what I did to kind of get my foot in the door. Having such a solid background in stuff outside of cats and dogs is really a boost to your resume when you're applying to a permanent uh, vet tech position. My advice to any girls considering a veterinary medicine career would be uh, just know it's it's a lot of school. Um, so so be prepared for that and uh, embrace it. Embrace all the amazing things that that you learn uh, through that journey. And uh, I guess it's not for the squeamish. If you don't like blood or poop, uh, maybe look for a different career.
All right, so it's great to hear from our veterinary team. They're really busy, so they couldn't be here themselves today, but they were really excited to be able to, to participate in this uh, program. Jessie, our technician who was in that video, actually was a Girl Scout herself for about 15 years and did the gold award. Um, so definitely Girl Scouts is a great way to kind of start to explore those different avenues. Um, in our animal hospital, as I said, we do have four full-time doctors and six full-time veterinary technicians that help us take care of everybody. Um, and all of our animal care staff here at the hospital work with all of the animals at the zoo. So they have to know how to take care of everything from a little tiny toad to a tamandua like Rio, all the way up to Groucho the Asian elephant, our 10,000 pound biggest elephant that lives here at the zoo. So in addition to the hospital and all of the amazing work that our vet team does, um, someone like myself, who's more in the education department, can kind of come in and play a separate role here at Denver Zoo. So my personal title is Lead Guest Engagement Facilitator, which is kind of a big title. And basically it means that I do a little bit of a lot of stuff here at the zoo, but mostly I kind of work with the vet team to help support the animal hospital. As I was saying before, the hospital is actually open for viewing. And anytime we have something going on in the hospital, it's really important to us to have someone in there who's talking about the procedure, talking about the animal who's being seen that day, letting you know what's going on and why it's helpful to our animal. So okay. that's my primary job five days a week. I'm in the hospital talking about what we're doing, what's going on, why it's a good thing, um, and what our vet team is doing to keep our animals feeling good and living their best lives. So I do think we actually have a super short clip here. Um, from an exam this summer that we did for Quill, the North American porcupine, who is actually another one of our ambassador animals, um, to check out his, his sinuses and his head and his nose. So Quill, the North American porcupine. Quill is a rodent. He is a very large rodent. So just doing a really good exam today. Still just kind of waiting for him to fall asleep. So we'll actually open up his mouth and pass a little tube into his throat, down into his windpipe, his trachea. What other animals do we take care of in the hospital? We can take care of almost anybody. On Friday, we did a little beak repair for a penguin. In just a second, he'll slide down towards the bottom of the screen as they start to take their CT scan. So it's really amazing that we can do this scan for Quill. It's gonna give us a lot of information about exactly what's going on inside of his head. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea of what I do in the animal hospital every day, just kind of talking through procedures, letting everybody know what's happening so that everybody feels comfortable watching the animal get taken care of and know that they're in good hands. So informal education, which is what I do, so I'm not like a teacher, but I do work here at the zoo educating people every day. That's another great avenue that you can go into um, if you're maybe thinking that you do want to work with animals but not get so involved with like the poop and things like that. Or you do want to be part of a vet team, but you maybe don't want to go to college for 12 years. So I was born and raised here in Denver. I've been coming to Denver Zoo as long as I can remember. Um, actually, I was a Girl Scout as well, and my troop adopted one of Denver Zoo's clouded leopards when I was in second grade. So that's one of my very first memories of Girl Scouts and Denver Zoo. Um, so I always have loved animals. I knew I wanted to do something with animals, but I wasn't quite sure what. Um, in college, I was really fortunate to be able to study abroad in South Africa and spend some time on game reserves working with endangered species in the field and just absolutely fell in love with the work there and the conservation um, and just a lot of these animals that people really don't know enough about them to value them the way that they need to be valued. So when I came home um, from South Africa, I was finishing up my degree in biology at Colorado State University. And I spent some time volunteering at a wolf sanctuary in Fort Collins. And then after that, I really didn't know what I wanted to do um, but I was able to get a job as a veterinary technician in a horse hospital. So for three years, I worked overnights in the intensive care and emergency unit. So I got to see all sorts of things. I got to help with babies being born. Um, I got to help with surgeries and emergencies and all crazy stuff that horses get themselves into. Um, and I really did love it. And I love being hands-on and learning something new every day. But it was really a <laughs> difficult job getting knocked around by horses and staying up all hours of the night. Um, and I finally decided that it was time to, to take it a little bit easier. 
um, and fortunately had this amazing opportunity to come join Denver Zoo's education team um, working in the animal hospital. So all of the things that I've done in my career, even though I didn't really have a path to start with and didn't know where I was going, it kind of comes together. You start with a little bit of conservation work and then a little bit of sanctuary work and then a little bit of hospital work, and then you kind of find your perfect niche. So it's okay to not know where you're going right away because you will eventually kind of figure things out and narrow it down and wind up somewhere where you love what you do. So I'm very fortunate to work in our vet hospital and get to know the team and watch all of our amazing procedures that happen here. Um, and actually one of our more recent procedures was for another ambassador animal, Toro the American bull snake. Um, Toro was seen in the animal hospital about two weeks ago for an unusual scale near his tail. So we've got Toro here. I'm gonna pass things back to Stephanie and she can tell you a little bit more about his care. Stephanie, we're having trouble hearing you. It's technical difficulties. There Thank we go. You. <laughs> um, so this is Toro, our bull snake. Um, when we first got him, he was only a couple of months old and he was only 118 grams when we first got him. And that is about the size of a very tiny apple. And now he is um, 1,500 grams. So that is um, getting close to about three pounds. So he's a big boy, all stretched out. He's a little over six feet long. Um, and then by handling him every single day, which is actually how we got him very used to being an ambassador animal. So bull snakes, like I said before, of learning natural history of our animals, bull snakes by nature are very feisty snakes. So their whole um, idea in life is to mimic a rattlesnake. So you can see his pattern is a lot like a rattlesnake. Um, when he gets nervous, he'll shake his tail really fast. He doesn't have a rattle, but it sounds like a rattle if he's in dried leaves. And he has an extra bone in his throat that makes his hiss extra loud. So it is their job to sound as ferocious as possible. And when Toro first came to us, even though he was the size of a, um, about a foot long um, and only as thick as his tail, he was very, very feisty. So he um, would hiss at us and shake that tail and basically told us that he wanted nothing to do with us. Um, but we would take him out. And um, as long as he was calm, he got to hang out with us. As soon as he got upset, he got to go home. And that's how we were able to work with him and tell him that it was his choice whether he was out or not. So over time, he started becoming more and more comfortable being with us. And we are able to now handle him very regularly. In fact, because of that scale issue, we now have to hold him twice a day and put ointment on his little scale. So through our examination with him every day when we get him out and we're just checking him over, we notice this little dry patch right at the very edge of his tail um, um, near his cloaca. And we noticed that a scale just looked a little bit different. Looks like we got some pictures of what it looked like when it was older and it's just weird. We didn't quite know what to do with it. So we showed our vets and that's where that vet's expertise, that 12 years of schooling comes in handy um, because they were able to look at it and they said, I don't like that. I don't like it at all. So they did a biopsy. So they actually cut the scale out around where it was at um, and took a test that they could look at it under a microscope and find out what exactly was wrong. So it turns out he just has um, a form of dermatitis and now he gets an ointment to make sure that he um, is nice and healthy. So he gets that twice a day um, uh, for the next week or so to make sure that it's healing very nicely. So now I'm gonna let him exercise on our pegboard here. So this is one of those enrichment items, a little toy for him to kind of exercise on and get some energy out. He's probably gonna go over top because that's his favorite thing to do. Um, but occasionally he'll rattle his tail. Nope, he's pretty comfy today. So we'll let him exercise. Um, 
And uh, I just want to direct you guys to the Denver Zoo website, denverzoo.org. Um, if you guys have any questions about career opportunities or our volunteer programs, there's even a special section for Girl Scout programs or Scout programming through our education department. Check that out on denverzoo.org. You can find out um, a lot of information on there of what we can offer you guys. But um, we've done a lot of talking. I bet you guys have some questions. So we're going to hang out with Toro and see if you guys have any questions for myself, Kelsey, or Rachel, um, and then any other questions about zoos, uh, jobs, zoo, we'll see if we can answer for you. I have a question. Why don't, why don't we, girls, since there's so many of us, why don't we do um, a Zoom raised hand? It looks like Cora, you've got your Zoom raised hand. Do you have a question? Boy or girl? Is it a is it Toro? Funny you should ask. <laughs> so this actually happens with a lot of our animals um, that don't have outward signs. If they're a boy or a girl, we just don't know. So when we got Toro in, we thought he was a boy for the last four years. Um, and about a week ago, our vet came in and started calling her a she. And we we're like, why, why are you calling her a she? Um, she said, well, I haven't get, like I haven't actually like done the test yet, but she has very high calcium levels, which indicates eggs. So it's probably a girl. I've been working with Toro since he was this big. Um, and I've called him a he for, for four years. So it until we're confirmed, I'm gonna have a hard time switching over, but I'm gonna try <laughs> as we confirm. <laughs> All right, Caitlin, okay. you're next. Caitlin, what's your question? Uh, what does it feel like? feel like to to work at the zoo it's it's i mean for for me i didn't get i didn't live close to a zoo so i didn't get to go to a zoo that often um so it was like a big field trip for me every time i got to go to the zoo so it still kind of feels like that for me i get to go to the zoo every day um i get to hang out with animals every day it's still really exciting for me. Um, I feel like, I know Kelsey feels the same, Rachel shaking her head, Ted, you guys <laughs> like, yeah, we, it, it's really fun. It's, it's a fun job. Um, I, you know, like I get to work with my friends. I get to work with um, really cool animals. It's, it's fun. All right. Looks like Elena, you've got your hand up. I was just wondering how you figured out when it was a like girl and a boy um so they did they did a blood test um for for other things and in the blood work it said she had high calcium levels which usually means it's a girl um the other way that they can tell is so uh snakes have a cloaca so they would go into the cloaca and do a test in there that would tell them if she's got girl parts or boy parts all right thank you lucia does um does um he or she that um bite or did or did you take out the teeth or whatever? No, so we don't want to do anything that would disrupt an animal from doing what it does naturally. So we always our rule of thumb is any animal with a mouth can bite, just like us, right? We have mouths, we can bite. So Toro can bite, but we do a lot of training with Toro to make sure that he's comfortable coming out. She's comfortable coming out um, because the only reason why he's going to bite is if he's not comfortable, he's not feeling good. So we want to make sure that he's as comfortable as possible. So hopefully he will not bite. Um, so we want to avoid that. I would actually jump into that and add that when we did our exam for Toro in the vet hospital just a few weeks ago, Toro's behaviors training and all of the handling and practice that he's had every day um, to help him be a good zoo animal for us and be a good ambassador actually allowed us to do our vet exam and our little biopsy of that scale while Toro was awake. So when we do our training, when our animals are used to being handled and used to kind of being poked around on just a little bit, it makes it a lot easier for us to take care of them when they need a shot or when they need a checkup or when they need an x-ray. Like we saw with Rio earlier, that training helps them to help us keep them feeling good. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, Bernadette, you're up next. What's your question? What does it eat? 
Well, um, so Tor Toro's favorite food is rats. Um, he gets one small rat once every two weeks. So uh, snakes have a much slower digestive system um, and need, need much less energy than we do. Um, I know I would not be okay with eating just two, once every two weeks. Um, I wouldn't be okay eating once every two days, but for Toro, he only has to eat once every two weeks. So he gets one small rat, it's about that big, um, once every two weeks. All right, let's see, we've got uh, Holland. Um, what does it feel like to hold a snake? Um, it depends on the snake. So that's what's really cool about our job as animal ambassador keepers. We work with 120 different animals of 80 different species. So we have probably around 10 species of snakes and every single one of them is different. So Toro here, his scales um, are quite, uh, quite a bit more raised and bumpy than some of our other scales or other snakes whose scales are nice and smooth. So he has much more rigid kind of almost pokey snail scales. Um, so he's a lot just rougher, um, but not slimy. I know a lot of people think that snakes are slimy, but they're not slimy at all. Great, we're gonna, we have time for one more question. Let's see, we've got... Um... Do we have any questions about like career stuff? Yeah. I mean, Toro, do you want to know about a, a job? Yes. Oh, and Caitlin's asking a question Me. up to this camera about how old um, the he or she is. Um, Four. Okay. Does anybody have a question about working at the zoo? Me. How do no. you know which animal is. Me. No. Oh, what somebody was asking, how do you know which animal? Uh, which animal is who? Like, oh, if they're twins, is what she's trying to ask. Call Not it. Okay. <laughs> like, how do you tell a rattlesnake from a, a this snake? Okay. Um, so the biggest difference is the shape of the head. So his he's got a very small head um, for a bull snake. Um, it's not very triangular. <laughs> Can I borrow this? So his head is very slender compared to his body, um, whereas uh, a rattlesnake would have a much more diamond shaped head. And then this tail, it doesn't have a true rattle on it. He's just shaking it really fast. So great. Well, thank you so much. I can see it shaking too. That's <laughs> Thank you all for your guests. So um, we were, are there any other jobs that um, maybe you could think of that um, would, we saw a good number? So the cool for that. So I have a question. If there's any other jobs that you can think of at the zoo that the girls might be interested in. Oh my goodness. We, we just have a, just about everything. Um, <laughs> so just from like jobs that you would find um, in, in lots of different businesses, um, accounting, um, we have development here. So uh, our, our human resources, so the people that take care of the people here at the zoo, um, our development helps raise money for us at the zoo. We are a nonprofit, so we have to get money from donations and from entry fees. Um, we don't just make oodles of money. So we need some donations and we have people that take care of that for us. Um, we have maintenance workers, we have plumbing, we have um, horticulture. Uh, our horticulture is some of the hardest working people. We have grounds that move, removes our snow so that people can come into the zoo. We have the people that interact with all of the people that take tickets, um, the people who serve the food. So there's just about everything you can think of here um, in our little one zoo team. Yeah, that, that's such a great point, Girl Scout. So, you know, you always think maybe you might, might want to go to school for business or for marketing <laughs> or something, but you can still work at the zoo. Yeah. You can still be around the animals and be promoting the zoo and developing programs. So there's lots of different jobs that you could have at the zoo. So um, I do want to um, give a little spotlight out to Angela from College Invest. And I'm just going to, Angela, if you don't mind, I'm going to spotlight you. And um, we can, there we go. 
Hi, Hi, Angela. Hey, there. hey, guys. That was so fun. I used to work at the Denver Zoo for about a decade back in the early 2000s, and I miss it. So it's great to see you guys. Um, I'm an example of just what she was talking about. My degree is in business and marketing, and I ended up being the CEO of the zoo, which means the boss of the zoo, and actually lived in a zoo uh, with my kids when they were your girls' age. Um, so we had really fun sleepovers, as you can imagine. And my husband was our veterinarian. He's an exotic animal or a zoo uh, veterinarian. So when there were baby animals or sick animals, uh, since we lived in the zoo, instead of uh, keeping them in the hospital, a lot of them stayed in our house. So I have slept with monkeys and gorillas and fed baby polar bears. And uh, we had flying squirrels escape in the house. Uh, one time we found them in my son's closet. So. Um, if you're enthusiastic about animals and zoos, uh, just uh, to reiterate what she's saying, um, just about any job out there from accounting to marketing, um, you can do it at a zoo. That's a lot of fun. Thank you. Oh, well, that sounds very exciting and, and quite thrilling to have a, a, <laughs> all those animals around you. Yeah, it was a fun childhood for sure for my kids. Oh, I bet. And fun for me too. What am I saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you for joining us. Yeah, you bet. Well, thank you so much to the to the Denver Zoo, easy for um, me to say. Um, and I'm just gonna share my screen once more because I just, we're gonna have to I wrap question. up because we've got some older Girl Scouts coming on next to, um, to I learn. I have a question. Zoo. So just, just hold on one moment. And I just wanted to quickly tell you about this thing that's going on at Girl Scouts now called the Future Me Contest. So basically um, this contest uh, you can do a video or you can write some words out and submit it and you can there's an older girl um, that's going to randomly be selected and a younger girl scout is going to be randomly selected and you can have $529 put into a college invest savings plan for you so that's pretty awesome so um, information is out on social media and emails and things like that for your caregiver to hear about the contest and you guys you girls can get Bye. free and creating a message. And I just want to definitely we thank you so now. much. Um, and, uh, and College Invest for um, helping us with this series. And I am now going to stop sharing my screen again and say, I uh, hope you all had a wonderful time. And um, we, have we have to get going now, but hopefully um, if you're at the zoo again, you can we have a question. talk one of the ambassadors and, and ask them some questions. I'm sorry we didn't get to everybody's questions today. Bye. Uh, bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.